welcome to Gindy's videos. And today I'm going to tell you the story about using a uh, newspaper to make a diaper. Now, first of all, let me tell you that until you get to about your third, fourth, fifth, twenty seventh youngin, you really aren't uh, a professional parent. You know, one, two, that's amateur. When you get to four, five, six, or more, that's where you get to be a professional. So don't try this at home unless you're a professional. First of all, let me tell you the story. Um, when we first started out, Suzanne and I got married, and then um, after a while, she got pregnant, or we got pregnant. And we knew pretty much right off, uh, maybe within the first few seconds that she was pregnant, we just had that feeling. Anyway, and then shortly after that, like within hours, uh, she was thrown up. And she continued to throw up all through most of the first trimester. And she threw up just constantly. There was even one point in time where our, our friend uh, Roger Madden was over for a, a visit. We were having like a little cookout kind of party. And he came over and he convinced Suzanne to eat some of the steak. And Suzanne wasn't going to eat any because she'd been, you know, throwing up for quite some time. Anyway, so she went ahead and acquiesced and decided to eat some of the steak. And she enjoyed it up until the point in time that she threw it up through her nose. Chunks of steak actually came out through her nose, and of course everybody's thinking, well, you should have chewed it better than that, but she thought she had. Anyway, so Suzanne continued to not be able to hold anything on her stomach, except for Mexican food and Kentucky Fried Chicken chicken livers, and we'll tell you a little bit more about the Kentucky Fried Chicken chicken livers in another episode, maybe. Anyway, <clears throat> she continued to be um, sick, couldn't keep anything on her stomach, and we finally went to the uh, doctor's office and I said, well, Take her right over across the street to the emergency room. We're going to get uh, IV started right away. You know, don't don't stop. Go right over there. And so went over to the emergency room, and they hooked her into IV fluids, and you know, things were going well, except for two things. One, the first thing is that back when she and I were dating, we'd gone to see the movie Halloween 2. And in the movie Halloween 2, Michael Myers kills one of his victims by taking the IV that's going into their arm, and laying it down and letting the uh, blood flow out through the uh, IV tubing. And of course this had caused Suzanne no end of concern over the situation about blood backing up into the uh, IV tube. The second part is that the IV ran out and blood started backing up into the tube. Well, Suzanne began to have a panic attack and I shut the IV off. There's a little wheel on it. You can stop the flow. I shut the IV off. I went and told the nurse, the nurse back behind the counter, I said, oh, you need to come on and take care of her IV, blood's backing up. She's like, somebody will be there in a few minutes. I'm like, no, you'll come now. And I reached across the counter and pulled her down to the end of the counter, down toward the room, past the security guard, and said, you can arrest me later. And I took uh, her, Suzanne on into the, uh, I mean, the, the nurse on into the room with Suzanne. Uh, I was bound to determine if that security guard had stopped me just to continue going. You know, just going to have to drag the security guard and the nurse with me. Anyway, so they were able to get the IV fluid started again and uh, get the blood flushed out of the tube and all of that. And Suzanne continued and got better. And finally, we had, as we got into the last trimester, we continued to have those episodes that happens with just about every first baby. It was called Braxton's Hicks. Is that right? Braxton Hicks. Braxton Hicks uh, contractions. And that's where it's like the uterus is practicing, getting ready for the big event, exercising or whatever. Well, we had several episodes. We'd go to the hospital and they'd keep her for a while. And I'm like, no, it's not time yet. I'll go home. And, of course, I felt like I was going to be a complete nervous total wreck whenever the time came. So, whenever um, we got home at night, I'd back both cars into the uh, carport, make sure that both cars were always filled with gas. If we went half a mile, stop and fill up the uh, cars with gas. Fortunately, Drennan's. Uh, Shell station was right beside our house, so we didn't have far to go to fill the cars up. Kept an extra tank of gas in the uh, extra can of gas in the carport. Uh, ordered three OB kits, one for each car and one for inside the house, just in case. Now I was a EMT, my license had expired at the time, but I had been an EMT and been trained in uh, uh, emergency childbirth and had done it a couple of times, and so I was you know pretty oh, you know capable or so I thought. But I also knew that I was likely to panic when it was my kid. Now, I had extra sets of keys made to both cars and the house, and I had them distributed several different places. There was a, uh, two extra sets of keys in the car, in, inside the carport, one on the back porch by the door, one on our nightstand, one in the kitchen. I kept an extra set of keys in my pocket along with my regular set of keys which hung on my belt, making sure that when the time came, because I knew I was going to lose my freaking mind, 
and I was concerned, of course, that the car wouldn't start or you know they'd run out of gas or whatever. So you know, I was absolutely concerned. I had a pager back then. We didn't have cell phones, or they they were out, but you couldn't get them in either. Uh, wasn't a cell tower anywhere, as far as I knew. Uh, but had pagers just in case Suzanne was someplace that I wasn't, which wasn't likely to happen. But just in case she was someplace I wasn't, when the time came, she could call me and I'd go through to the pager. Well, the day came, and we worked at the store. And uh, during the day at the store, the mucus plug came out, and Suzanne was like, "Oh, well, I think today might be the day." And she was a lot more calm than I thought she would be. Anyway, so we finished out the day. It wasn't much longer. We finished out the day, and then we went uh, headed toward town, figuring we're going to go to the hospital. We saw her mom and her sister headed back, like they were headed uh, towards their trailer, and uh, we'd already passed by where the, their house was. So I turned around and stopped and told them, you know, we were going to the hospital that uh, Suzanne was in labor. And uh, then right after that, Suzanne said, you know, when I get to the hospital, they're not going to let me eat till after the baby's born, and maybe not a while after that. I'm like, okay. So she said, well, why don't we stop at Burger King? So we stopped at Burger King. We both ate a triple meat, triple cheese Whopper, and uh, with all the fixings, of course, you got to have big old Whopper, and uh, after stopping, eating our uh, our Whopper, we drove into the hospital, and there when we got to the hospital with Suzanne's mama, Suzanne's sister, my mama, my sister, and my father, all waiting, wanting to know, where have y'all been? We thought y'all broke down on the side of the road, but we didn't see you when we were coming in, we couldn't figure out what had happened to you, and so they were quite concerned, and they let me know, quite frankly, that they had been concerned. Anyway, got Suzanne up to the uh, um, maternity ward, and they... Uh, uh, of course, made sure that she didn't eat anymore. And um, so, day turned into night, the night turned into day. And uh, along about the early morning, maybe about 10 uh, a.m. or so, uh, a doctor, a training doctor came in and said, uh, listen, we have some student nurses that have never seen a baby being born before, and we'd like to know, could uh, they come in and watch? There's only about 30 of them. Now, Suzanne is very introverted, and I thought, well, she'd never be able to handle this. But she's like, sure, come on, let them come on in. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> anyway, so the nurses, these student nurses, were going to have to be in their class at 11.30. And some of them went ahead and left early. But at 11.29, Jared was born. He's like, well, I waited till the last minute. I was going to wait till exactly noon because today's my, my due date. I was going to be punctual right on time, as close to on time as you can get. We were born right on noon. But I figured I'd let these nurses have the thrill of seeing me. Well, anyway, with your first child, you have everything. When you go out, you take the kitchen sink, you take the stroller, you take the back of the stroller, you take the diaper bag, you take a diaper bag in case you run out of stuff in the diaper bag. And just in case that diaper bag doesn't have enough, you got two or three more diaper bags. And you got this great big old 96 pack, uh, box pack of uh, diapers you put in the car with you. Uh, you load up the portable crib, the portable um, playpen, the three or four strollers, and you know, a lot of extra bottles, and you got 27 changes of clothing, and all of that to go to Grandma's house. And in our case, Grandma's house was just up the hill from our house. So we didn't have very far to have to go to Grandma's house, or Great Grandma's house, which was even nowhere near as far as that. And at uh, Papa's and, and Nana's house, which is uh, Jared's uh, paternal grandparents, uh, at their house there was already all the supplies because, you know, just in case when we got up there. So we called all this stuff, you know, when you're a new parent, the first parent, you know, if you go across the street to get the newspaper, you take all this stuff. You look like a caravan going across the desert. When the second child comes along, you take one diaper bag and one stroller and, you know, a couple of bottles and maybe a change of clothes and that's it. By the time the third child comes along, you take you know a diaper bag and a, a bottle with you. But when you get to that fourth or fifth child, in our case it was our fifth child because our third child, Dorian Lee, um, passed away the day she died. I mean, the day she was born, she, she died. So, um, Davy Jr., or David Jr., was actually our um, fourth child. And Megan, Maggie, was actually our fifth child. You know, so by the time we got to our fifth child, we were like, okay, uh, one diaper in, or a couple diapers in this pocket for uh, the one child, a couple diapers of the other side of the pocket for this child, a bottle in this pocket for the one, a bottle in this pocket for the other, a burp pad, and off we go. And that's it. 
Uh, I remember going to uh, the church just up the road from us. Had you know two diapers uh, for each kid, a bottle for each kid. Everything was fine, no problem. Well, when you get your first child, you buy the specialty diapers. You know the name brand, top of the line specialty diapers. The second child gets you know the second tier. Like in our case, it was Pampers were the most expensive. We got the second one. It was the Huggies. Uh, by the third child, you know the our um, fourth child actually, we got into uh, Parents' Choice, which is the Walmart brand uh, diapers. And with little Maggie, it was newspaper. Is it like? Well, and she likes to tell it uh, by, by me, newspaper. Well, and that's true. What really happened? What happened was one day we went out to go out to uh, just take a little ride, and we decided along the way that we were going to stop at this place. Uh, it was a convenience store that sold hot dogs off the roller grill, and they're very, very good. Now, if you're in Williamson, South Carolina, I don't know the name of this place, but it's a little convenience store. If you're in Williamson, South Carolina, you stop there and get the roller grill um, hot dogs. If you're in Greenwood, South Carolina, you stop by Barrett's, which is right across the street from the Greenwood Memorial Gardens, and they got great hot dogs. And, of course, if you're Anderson, in Anderson, South Carolina, you got to stop by Skins, and they got a lot of locations, so you got to stop by Skins if you're uh, in Anderson. But anyway, to make a short story long, like I want to do, we stopped at this place. We called it the dump because when we parked the car, we were parked right in, in front of the uh, garbage dumpster. And we'd go inside and get our hot dogs, come back out and eat them right there at the dumpster. So we said we'd go to the dump to eat. And the kids thought that was really funny. Anyway, so we happened to stop by our favorite eating place, the dump. And we're sitting there eating at the dump. And uh, Maggie's standing in the seat uh, between Suzanne and me. And uh, Suzanne looks at uh, Maggie and says, what's that on her leg? And I looked and I said, looks like chili. And Suzanne looked really more, she said, that's not chili. And it wasn't chili. And it didn't smell like chili. And this stuff was everywhere. It was all down her legs. She just runny poopy everywhere, all down her legs. Now, remember, we'd gotten out of the habit of carrying diapers because usually we could leave the house and, you know, stay out long enough and come back and we wouldn't have to change diapers on anybody. But we misjudged on this one. And so here we are, no diapers, no baby wipes or anything. Go inside the uh, store. Because we're right there at the convenience store. You got any diapers? No, we don't ever have any call for diapers. So no diapers. You got any baby wipes? No, we don't ever call, have any call for baby wipes. So bought a roll of paper towel and a local newspaper. The Williamson newspaper. I don't remember the, uh, the name of the Williamson newspaper, but the Williamson newspaper. Went out the car. We had some duct tape in the car because every good redneck carries duct tape in the car. Um, duct tape in the car. And so I fashioned a diaper out of newspaper and duct tape. Perfect redneck diaper. Uh, anyway, we made it back home. We didn't have too much of a mess um, other than that original mess. And we learned to always take at least one diaper and some baby wipes with us wherever we go. And now, even though we don't have any diaper babies, we still travel with baby wipes because you never know when something may happen where you need baby wipes. You know, you spill something in the car or whatever. So we always carry those anyway. Uh, it's a good thing for grandparents to have. Always have an extra diaper. I always have some extra um, baby wipes on hand. If you have a story that you'd like to, to share about uh, um, babies growing up, diapers, parental, parental kind of things, the different things you learn as you go along, uh, either drop it to us in an email or we'll put it in the comments on the blogs and let us know. Send us an email at gindysvideos at gmail.com. That's G-I-N-D-Y-S-V-I-D-E-O-S at gmail.com. And we thank you very much.